Hey, welcome to the channel. I'm the PLC Tech and we're returning to the basics today. How to measure current with a multimeter for beginners. If you work with electronics, cars, field instruments, or going to do any electrical troubleshooting, a multimeter is one tool you must have. So, not often do you have to read current with a multimeter, but it's important to know how. And I'll walk you through it step by step. And stick around to the end because I'll show you some mistakes beginners make when using the multimeter for current and how to avoid them. Trust me, these mistakes can cost you time, money, and maybe even your meter. Before we dive in, I need your help. If you could find this video useful, hit the like button, subscribe, and drop a comment below. It really helps the channel grow so more people can learn. By the way, let me know what kind of content you want to see next. Alright, let's get started. Okay, this is a cheaper clamp-on meter. It uh, has a lot of the same settings just like a regular multimeter. Only we have this clamp for measuring AC current. As far as if you've seen the previous video, and I'll put a link in the description below, it still has the connections for measuring voltage. And I have another example, which is a fluke. Basically the same thing. Clamp on. Has the same plugs for measuring voltage. This also measure amps, AC. And what I'm going to do is we're going to show you how to measure those amps with an adapter that splits a regular AC cable. This is the adapter. It uh, basically plugs in just like anything else, and then you plug in whatever the power consuming device is on this end and what happens is the one leg goes through this side to the output the neutral leg goes to the other side this is how a clamp meter works a clamp meter goes around one leg that has current because in AC if we went around both legs they would cancel each other out and it wouldn't be able to measure current okay so I will hook that up and be right back two hours later okay so like I said this is going to be a, a light it's about a 60 watt light bulb this is my power cord coming into the adapter so right now there's current flowing through this system and we're going to use the cheaper meter to set it to amperage we're just going to set it to 20 amp range we've talked about this in a previous video about how these ranges just affect accuracy so with this one set to 20 amps which is its lowest amp setting that's as close in, as close in accuracy as we're going to get so let's see what this shows okay about 4.38 that's really all there is to it now there's some tweaking and you need to be concerned with as far as making sure that these connections at the top on the clamp are together so we're gonna double check that and make sure because I think it was wrong okay there we go there's 6.18 and it's solid As long as I don't move too much. <clears throat> now let's check the other one. Same thing. This fluke only has one amp symbol because it's auto ranging. It will range to the best accuracy internally, which makes it really nice. Now 
Now you can see it's only showing a tenth. There's 6.1. So between the two, there's a difference of about a tenth. Now to do this in the real world without this adapter for 120 volt AC, you have to have the cable pulled apart. And then you'll have to just basically catch around the black wire, which is typically considered the hot wire. Same way, just pretend that this is the white neutral wire and this is the black hot wire. Just clamp around it while it's in amp mode. Now we'll talk about measuring DC amps, which is actually the more complicated one. It requires you to bake the circuit and put your meter in the circuit so that the DC current flows through the meter and back out to the load. Alright, so this is another fluke. This is a 789 process meter. It's quite a bit more expensive than just a regular meter that you get at you know, Lowe's or any big box stores. It also has a lot more capacity for measuring amps or even generating a power loop on a milliamp voltage. So we're only concerned about measuring amps. And you notice it has an AC and a DC symbol. So we could technically do both, but we're only going to do DC. Because the safer way to measure AC is with the clamp meter. So we need to set our connections. Remember I said that the black should always be black. Even though it's a totally, manner, totally different meter, it's still the same principle. And then we're going to read a signal generating device, which is what this is. So we don't need it on loop powered. We just need to make a connection for our two cables from here to here. This is that pro tip. Always make sure that when you change these dial settings that your cable is in the correct position. You will blow fuses. This is our cables, same black and red is very typical. These actually have clamps on them instead of the little safety covers so that I can clamp onto the wire and just hold it there without me holding it. So let's hook it up. Black to the black, red to the red, set the dial to amps. Bring it up so you can see it a little better. Clip these two together. We got nothing. This device is generating 4 milli, 4.1 milliamps. If I rotate this dial, it'll generate up to about 20. So there's, I don't know, let's just set it to six. We'll take the two leads that goes to that. Clamp our meter on it. You remember from the previous video we talked about polarity. Here again is where it's important. Two hours later. Alright, so now we hook up our meter, black going to the black, red going to the red, and you can see that we're reading six, almost six milliamps, it matches up with the six on the transmitter. You notice when I originally described how to hook up those cables, I hooked them up wrong. So even the pros make mistakes at this. So let's adjust a little bit, see what it looks like. First off, we got our polarity correct. So if I reverse to that, we'd have this negative number. It's not right compared to what we're transmitting. 
And that's because this device puts out a fairly low voltage when it generates a signal. It's not like it's 24 volts like most instruments and will use. So when we hook it up correctly, we get a positive number that's closer to at six. It's on the transmitter. Now this is just the signal strength. As we go up, we go up. Very close to what the signal generator is. If you're interested in what this signal generator is, it's something I just put together from some parts I ordered off of Amazon. It's not too bad cost wise. So give me a comment and I will put a link to it. And that's it. That's all there is to it. As far as pro tips on this DC, you've already seen it. You've seen me make that mistake. Having these cables in the wrong location. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and share this video to help others. Also let us know what you would like to see next in the comments.